we can probably get going here. We already have quite a few people. It looks like you guys are um, pretty excited about this topic. Um, obviously, there's a lot that we can learn from each other, which is the reason that we have these events. Um, so to just back it up to the intros, my name is Jessica Schisler, and um, I've been living in a van for about four years now. And um, I'm one of the founders, along with Brienne, of the Van Life app. And um, our goal is to help facilitate solutions for living on the road, which includes all of the resources you need and the community that you want. So um, tonight we are gonna be focusing on winter van life, all the things about how to solve the problems if you're gonna be in the cold, um, where to stay, how to stay warm. And then also if you are not gonna be staying in cold weather, um, we'll, we'll talk just for briefly about like places we could go to stay warm in the winter that are van life friendly. All right, so we already started putting in where we're coming from in the chat. So if you just joined us, please drop in where you are calling in from into the chat. Um, if you need closed captionings, um, there is a button in the lower corner of the um, Zoom controls that allows you to have that. So real time closed captioning, um, if that is something that you require. Um, and then of course, we'd love to see your faces. So please turn on your cameras. This is a community event we're, we're trying to encourage. Like if you have an answer that you want to help um, answer one of the questions that someone has, please go ahead and just um, either unmute yourself when it's appropriate. Um, and then can make sure that this is a community discussion and that we're moving forward together. Um, another tip you can toggle between um, zoom views using the view controls in the top right of your corner, which will allow you to either see the speaker view or a gallery view if you want to scroll between um, looking at everybody and then looking at the speaker. Um, as we get more people in, obviously, the screens will get smaller. And if you're on your mobile device, um, if you swipe the screens, you'll be able to see the different views. Um, and then as a reminder, it, it looks like we're going to have quite a few people on the call. Please just stay muted unless um, you have something to say that can, that can add to the discussion or if you have a question. Um, we're going to try and keep questions in the chat so that we can kind of address them as we get there. Um, but this is an open discussion. And this will be about one hour. So uh, we are so excited that you all joined us tonight. Um, I'm going to let Brienne do uh, another introduction if you want to do a little bit about you and the team and then we can dive right in. Yeah, sure. Yeah, and, sure. Uh, and, um, oh, it's coming back at me. Okay, I think this is good now. So um, we are, yeah, I'm Brienne. I'm, I'm one of the founders of the Van Life app. Um, if you haven't used the app lately, download it. It's like totally different from when we launched it. Uh, for those of you who've been following along with us for a while, we are a traditional like bootstrap startup. Uh, we had problems of our own and we wanted to fix them and we've been hosting community events. We know all of you experience the same problems we do. So uh, we really are working hard to fix them, um, helping people find locations. We have over 20,000 locations on the Van Life app now. We have like thousands and thousands of reviews coming in every month. Um, so it's growing fast and there's a lot of cool stuff happening. Um, but we are always open for feedback. We learn from everybody in the community. So if you ever have anything that you wanna see or that you're having a problem with or that you love and you just wanna tell us about it, uh, reach out to us anytime at feedback at the uh, or hello at the Jess and I are also always accessible. It's Jess at the or Brianne at the So pretty much if you put a word at the you'll probably get through somewhere. <laughs> um, <laughs> So yeah, and um, I am just, yeah, really thankful that we can keep having these virtual meetups. I am missing in-person meetups, so I cannot wait until we can start doing that again. Um, but just so you know, on the Van Life app, if you haven't been on in a while, you can find people nearby. Um, if you scroll out a little bit, your map view, 
and a, an orange bubble will pop in the left upper left hand corner that'll say like there are five people nearby you can click on that and message people around you we have a new feature that's camp share um i swear this whole thing's not going to be about the van life app but i we have some exciting stuff that i wanted to share uh camp share which is essentially couch surfing but for van life so people who have property or people who have uh driveways are listing them most of the ones around the country that are being listed right now are free this is a brand new feature that we're learning from um so it's kind of cool uh and then we also have map layers so if you want to see satellite view or terrain or uh there's four of them jess can probably speak better better about them than i can because <laughs> yeah, and that was a big thing from y'all um so yeah that would be awesome check it out um but really we are here today to connect as a community so i'm going to go ahead and launch our first poll which is our check-ins so you'll see this pop up on your screen now um we do this with all of our team meetings all of our virtual meetups here uh, mental health is very important especially during these times so tell us how you're feeling green is all good yellow could be better orange not so great and red is you need urgent help um, this is just so we know how we're going into this as a community together and to be mindful of, of how we are operating um, as, you know, a family basically here. So go ahead and, and click which one you're feeling today. Um, and then we can go into the next poll, which will be more about experience. And so far, things are looking pretty good. It was much better than the last, last meetup because that was the day before the election and uh, things were a little hairier in November than they are in December. Um, okay, all right. Thank you to everyone who has checked in. Um, I'm happy to say that most of us are green, some of us are yellow. Um, so as we move forward, we'll be uh, mindful of how we're interacting with each other. Okay, so next poll. This is really the fun part, the experience. Where do you plan to spend your winter? And then what's your camping experience? Um, so are you gonna be able to, um, are you gonna be asking the questions or are you gonna be helping us answer the questions tonight? So um, tell us a little bit about why you came here and what your experience is. One of the things we realized at our last meetup, if you were there was that, or if you weren't there, it was that um, allowing people to mute and unmute themselves and making this a much more interactive experience was a lot more exciting than um, just having a few people get up and answer questions or talk. So that's why we kind of came at this one from a more democratic or, or like uh, interpersonal perspective. Um, so if you can talk about something, we would love for you to raise your hand or unmute yourself. Um, in the with the controls if you go to participants in the, on your screen you'll be able to um care is there a hand raise jess yes uh, you actually click the participant not the arrow you just click participant part and then on the right hand side in the chat it'll show you a little option to say raise hand Thank you, Matt. Oh, and we didn't do those intros. That's Matt. Um, he's one of our interns here helping us build um, some things on the back end for the app, um, along with David, Kim, and I saw Natalia, who some of y'all have met during, during user testing, and she interviews a lot of people, and John Rowe is somewhere in here as well. So um, that's who our team is. <laughs> All right, so ending the poll and sharing everything. So it looks like, all right, 31% of y'all are going someplace warm. Some of y'all are going cold, a little bit of both. Okay, and then as for experience, um, a lot of people in the middle um, and then a lot of people still at the, that's why I'm here. So cool. I'm glad you all made it. Um, 
So let's jump right in. The, the way that we're going to organize this is that we have a few topics that we want to um, kind of group the discussion in, and we're going to try and keep it so that we have about, I don't know, 10 or 15 minutes per topic, depending on how the conversations are going. So um, I'll just give you a little bit of overview so you can kind of you know, keep your questions um, uh, to where they're appropriate. So we're gonna be talking about the heater options, which are like your furnace and your diesel heaters, um, insulation, uh, condensation and what to do about it, uh, winterizing your RV, and then we'll jump into some best ski towns to camp in and then best places to stay warm. Um, so that's a little bit about how we're going to operate this. So let's jump right into the heater options. Um, there obviously are a lot of options and I would love to have other people jump in when they think it's appropriate. So um, I let's start with the, I think I'm going to rearrange the order for the people who have my agenda. Um, I'm going to start with the, the easiest option, which is the portable heater. Um, which is also referred to as the Mr. Buddy. So uh, show of hands, how many people have a Mr. Buddy or are planning to use a Mr. Buddy? And I'm gonna have to scroll through my screen to see you all. So, okay, I see a thumbs up. Okay. And does anybody here currently have a Mr. Buddy? And maybe just unmute yourself too, because I can't see everybody. I have a Mr. Buddy. One of my friends just gave me one this year, but I've never used it. So I got to learn how to use it because it's my first Mr. Buddy. Yeah, awesome, Lenny. Thank you. Um, so Mr. Buddy, if, if you don't know what this is, it's essentially this portable unit where you take a little propane canister and you screw it in and then you ignite it. And so that it creates it, a heat it's a heating element run off of propane, but it's a standalone unit. So there's no installation. It's fairly affordable. You can get it on um, Walmart, you know, at Walmart. You, so you can pick it up in person. Um, and then also um, it, it's just convenient. So there are some drawbacks to the Mr. Buddy though, um, which include condensation. So any time we're gonna be talking about propane heating, uh, propane is a very moist um, air system. And especially without ventilation, you're gonna be getting a lot of moisture in your van with propane. Um, and then carbon monoxide. So we're, this is a really big one for the Mr. Buddy. Highly encourage you to have a carbon monoxide detector in your van. Um, if you plan to use this type of heating because um, it can be pretty dangerous uh, because of the fumes that it's not, it's not vented out. Um, and then ventilation with that, definitely have the door cracked or the vent open or the window cracked um, just to make sure that that's getting out. Um, am I missing something on, Barb, you wanna jump in? So my buddy has a Mr. Buddy. <laughs> And uh, he's been staying here for the last three weeks. And one of the things that we found out is that nowhere in the Bay Area can you find the little propane cans. And it's because it's been so cold here at night and there's so many people living in RVs and vans right now because it's such an expensive area that every Walmart, Target, we, we looked for, I think up to 40 miles away from my house. And the one place that ended up having them was triple charging for the small, propane canisters. Wow. So keep that wow. in mind. I just wanted to throw that out. Like do your research to make sure there's actually propane available where you are if you're gonna use a Mr. Buddy. Yeah. yeah. Shelly, I see you. Shelly, were you trying to Oh, stop? yeah, I was just gonna mention we, um, Eurovan brand has um, window vents that you could put on the passenger and driver's side they're metal vents so you get some airflow but you still have the safety of uh, not having open windows that's awesome and then One i just more. want to jump in on you know, oh i'm who is that this is adam hey Hi. um one thing one other thing to note with the the mr buddy heaters is that i i used one at when i was first building my van um in colorado and they don't really work well at higher elevations. So if you do intend to stay higher up, 
and uh, it messes with the air fuel mixture or something and they, they just don't they usually only run for a little bit and then they go out so keep that in mind as well great great tip and that's well this will come up on the diesel as well i think with the with the high elevation and then barry in the chat here has said that um you can get adapters to refill the one pound tanks from the 20 pound tanks um so that is also an option um probably a lot greener um, for the environment as well to not have so many of those little green propane tanks. Thank you for that, Barry. Anything else on Mr. Buddy that that we think is important to know before we we go into the next one? And Bryce, I see you raised your hand there. Yeah, um, so I have, I have a no-name space heater. Uh, I know Mr. Buddies have. I know uh, Mr. Buddies have uh, low oxygen cutoff. But um, even if there is no like CO problem, there can be like, like persistent low oxygen. And I, I bought I bought a four gas monitor to detect oxygen levels. If you don't have ventilation, um, the oxygen levels just plummet really quickly. That's all. Yeah. Thank you, Bryce. And I just chatted, I accidentally unraised someone's hand when I was trying to unraise Bryce's. So if that was yours, I apologize. Please raise it again so you can chime in. There we go. Can And Rob, can you unmute yourself? Yeah. I've done you? No, I, sorry, I just didn't know if that was something I'm supposed to do. Um, I just it. wanted to, to step in because there's, um, there's, different levels of the Mr. Buddy. And I actually got the Big Buddy originally because I thought, you know, Big Van. Um, just, I guess if you're gonna do that, just be aware of the size of your van because the the Big Buddy is definitely too big for any anybody's van. Oh man, I did you find out the hard way on that one? Yeah, it, it, it's, it's like a sauna. Oh no. <laughs> Oh my gosh, thank you for sharing that. Uh, <laughs> okay, um, I'm going to move into, I'm going to stay on the propane vein here and move into the propane furnace, which um, actually we had installed in our first van and our second van um, because it's a very affordable option and it vents out. And this is a lot of um, the similar systems that like big RV manufacturers would use. Um, they're a little bit larger um, and they obviously do require in installation, but they do have the added like upgrade from the Mr. Buddy that they vent out. So you have to be a little less worried about that, um, the carbon monoxide and things like that. Um, anybody here have experience with propane furnaces that they want to share? I stick to the Southwest most of the time, so not good. <laughs> uh, okay. I guess nobody uses propane furnaces. Um, I mean, I don't use one, but I know somebody who does. They don't have any condensation because they vent out the, the condensation. I'm still I'm not really knowledgeable on that. Yeah, that is that is very accurate. And um, the reason we chose it for our, our first van was it was a lot more affordable. Um, it's a, in my experience, comparing the propane furnace to like a diesel heater, um, the, the propane is cheaper. Um, it has a bigger footprint than the diesel heater. Um, and then the propane furnace, it does vent out. So you're right about that. It's a little less um, on the condensation side of things, um, but it is a little noisier in our experience um, if it is mounted inside of the van. And Jess, you've had both a diesel heater and this propane heater. What is your like ultimate choice? So it's hard because like the diesel heaters are like a lot more expensive. Um, they do make like brand like na no brand names um, that that are more affordable. So like I I I am struggling. Like I don't want to say that diesel is better because of the price, um, but if you have a diesel van, 
you can you can tap right into the the diesel fuel line and it sips right off of your tank so you don't need a secondary fuel source um, and then it is mounted we have it mounted outside of the van i'm like looking at it over there like you know what i'm doing uh, it's mounted outside of the van and then we have the device underneath the blower underneath of the passenger seat so it's pretty quiet on the inside of the van, but if you're outside of the van, it sounds like a spaceship. Like it sounds like it's like launching off. Um, and Barb, you're shaking your head, so I'm gonna let you jump in. Uh, yeah, I uh, I have the same one. I have a Webasto that's uh, attached to my diesel engine as well, and uh, it's great because, like just said, you don't have to get another fuel source. Um, you just always have to make sure you have a quarter tank, which I don't let my van go below a quarter, anyways. Um, but yeah, it sounds like a spaceship taking off on the outside. And if you leave your door cracked, you do get the fumes in your van and they stink really bad. So you have to close your doors and your windows. But yeah, it's really quiet. It's wonderful at night. You can actually set it to turn on at a certain time and turn off at a certain time um, and set your temp. So it'll just come on when it gets too cold. So I love it. Anyone I have a else? question about that. Um, yeah. I was wondering, uh, so say you didn't have a vent fan in your van and you were using like the front windows cracked, would that to, for inter, in, for inside ventilation, would that interfere poorly with the, what you just said about having the door cracked and having fuel come in? My husband's chiming in. Um, he, he said it'd probably be okay because the fumes are a little lower. They're below the van, but I mean, the wind can carry them up. Um, I don't know, though. It, I, it all depends, I guess, where you would position the exhaust pipe to. When you get the whole kit, like they basically make you put it in a certain place because of the length of the pipe. Um, I don't, do you want to jump in on that? Uh, yeah. So so the way the way we have our or Wabasto, it's mounted under the passenger seat and all of the unit is under there, the intake, exhaust. So if you wanted to crack a window, crack your driver's side window and those those fumes would never come in. So awesome. uh, the Thank only you. problem we have is if you open the slider because it's on that passenger side, then those fumes come in kind of at the bottom of that door. But the uh, anything on the driver's side would be good. Oh, thank you, Mike. He he is uh, very busy with custom orders right now, so that's why he's not on camera. Um, uh, awesome. Any other like? Oh, we know what we haven't talked about is the high altitude. Um, so high altitude and cleaning. These are kind of like the two big things on the diesel heaters. So um, even in the off season, they recommend that you run the diesel heater like once a month um, just for maintenance of it. And um, I don't know if this like burns something off that collects over time um, on the igniter, but um, it is recommended. So uh, when you are, you know, even in the summer, definitely just run it for like 20 minutes or so. Um, and then they do have a high altitude kit um, I'm like, I'm hoping someone on here has, we have experience, but I just, I don't want to talk the whole time. So if anybody else has something they want to jump in on. Heather? We just got a, um, an SBAR 2, which the two part is supposed to be good for high altitudes. And we live in Park City, Utah. And we were just camping with it at 9,000 feet at the North Rim of the Grand Canyon. And it was perfect. It is, and it's hooked up to our diesel line and it runs absolutely perfect, just quiet, total game changer. Wow. I, I know that, that um, like cost is maybe a barrier for some people with the diesel heaters, but on one of our last meetups, um, Mike, I don't think Mike is here, but he was talking does anybody have any experience with offering diesel heaters or a more affordable option? Are you are you talking about me? I'm, I'm over here. I don't know if you guys can oh, hear yeah. me. Oh, oh there you are. are. Sorry, I didn't want to. I didn't want to interrupt. I don't have my trucker's headset on like I had last time. Yeah, couldn't recognize you because of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have it on more than I have it off. <laughs> Um, I, I have, uh, just to kind of add that experience there, I have been using um, an off-brand 
Chinese diesel heater that I got on Amazon, the price was like 150 or so. Um, kind of modeled after the Webastos, so as far as like diesel heaters go. I have the five kilowatt unit, so they make two five and eight kilowatt units, and the five kilowatt unit is one that I have. I have a pretty small-ish van. It's a 99 Dodge Ram van, uh, 1500, so like a conversion van, like 20 years old. Um, it heats the space great. I've, I've had, honestly, I've had nothing, I've never done high altitude, although I know they have the kits, but I've had really good experiences with it. Um, you know, when I first got into it, I had a couple of friends that had done like the fireplaces or wood stoves inside, which are really great. But if the unit is so small that you have to put, if you have to wake up and put fuel in, if you are running it overnight, then like the diesel is the closest thing that I, and I don't have experience with propane, but getting into the van and like hitting a button and then just waiting 10 minutes and it gets it up to, on the low setting, it's 30 degrees higher than than whatever the ambient temperature is outside. And it's surprisingly consistent. Um, the thing you were talking about just with the, with the buildup on the inside, the carbon builds up over time because that's burning the diesel in the, in the, the unit. So um, I know people recommend like once a season or twice a season, you could open up the unit from the top and you can clean out the carbon. And there's like a process for that. I haven't done it yet, but um, I've run mine easily a few hundred hours at this point, And I've been really lucky with it. I haven't had any issues personally. 150 is a good entry price because they're normally over over a thousand dollars not including installation so yes yeah, so that's oh sorry what yeah no go ahead my, my question was it was installation similar to what you could expect with a Wabasto or or the other on brand yeah so I mean I, I bought it on Amazon just the kit like it was I didn't have somebody install it I did it myself but it's, it's the same installation process as a Webasto. Like if you were going to get, um, it's kind of like if you're refrigerator shopping and you're looking at Dometic, that is like, it's like an eight or 900 or a thousand dollar unit. And then you could find like the Alp, the Alpicool ones that are like 200. The quality is not the same in everything, but the basic function does the same thing. For me in my van, my specific needs, I just went for the $150 one for, because completely off brand. Like it's just not probably as high quality, but I can't tell the difference because of how well it's worked. Um, I did the install myself and I think if, if you built your van or you're comfortable working with your hands, you can, it doesn't take a lot of skills, but you can cut a few holes in the bottom of the van. It all comes with like templates and stuff. It's really not terribly difficult. There's a good PDF I found also that walks you through the installation process that somebody took the time to write out. I think it's like 10 pages or something with the step-by-step -step with pictures, but, um, I helped uh, Rob, who's on the call, we did an install on his diesel heater a couple, of, maybe a month ago. Uh, it took maybe, if we set that down from beginning to end and didn't stop anywhere in between, maybe an hour of installation. But for the amount of hours that I get out of it, I would do it again in a heartbeat. I've gotten so much value out of that thing, it's crazy. Awesome, and I know Greg, Greg has had his hand up for a minute and then Rob. You have to unmute yourself, Greg. Hi. Um, I purchased a 78 Volkswagen um, Vanagon. It, well, it, it was before Vanagon times, but it was a Volkswagen bus. And it came from the factory with a gasoline heater. And I was in Michigan at the time and I really loved it. It was great to be able to set the timer and have the van all warm uh, before I started my drive. Has anyone had experience with the gasoline versus the diesel heater? And I, is that the Propex heater? No, no, it was a, uh, like a Wobasto, but it was gasoline, oh. not diesel. We have a Webasto with gasoline. Um, it's tapped into our gas tank, but we had it professionally installed. So I don't know a ton about the difference and mm -hmm. how that was done, but we like it so far. I did do a, a, a web search and some of the knockoff ones that you can get from China, uh, they cautioned you that say, sometimes they'll say gasoline but they're really diesel ones. And so when they arrive, they won't run on gasoline. They'll only run on diesel. So if anyone gets one of those knockoff ones, they need to be careful about that. 
Hi. That's yeah. Really dangerous. Yeah, gasoline's a lot more flammable or a lot easier to catch on fire than diesel. So I would probably only go with the name brand for, on a gas mm -hmm. one. But mm -hmm. other than that, the operation between gas and diesel is basically the same. All right. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Rob, you want to jump in? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to add uh, to what Mike was saying about the, the install. So um, originally, I had bought a diesel heater before. Um, so I'm on my second one now because the first one I kind of did a poor job with, which is kind of the point. Um, so not only do they have the um, the Chinese diesel heaters on Amazon, but they have an all-in-one kit. So they, it's kind of like a plug and play. And Mike made a really good analogy when me and him were talking about it last. Um, you know, people that get into van life who don't really want to do an electrical system and kind of by the goal zero, where it's like a plug and play electrical system, they make a like a plug and play diesel heater where it's like, it's literally the size of a computer tower, you just drill two holes in the floor. And it's like, it's already got the fuel line hooked up to the pump to the um, the gas tank and everything. So uh, you're just literally plugging in and, you know, positive to negative on your on your fuse box. And if you're a little intimidated with the install, I would recommend trying that because they're only like $20 more expensive. Awesome. This is great. This is great. I love that y'all all came with each having your own tips and tricks for this. Um, any other questions about diesel heaters? All right, if you do, if they come up, just drop them into the chat and we'll get back to them. Um, the next thing I wanna chat about is a really cool option um, that someone here has and it's radiant floor heat. So I'm gonna let uh, John kind of talk about what, what system he put in and um, potentially this could be a solution for some of you here. Hi everyone, I'm John. Um, I work with the Van Life app um, so I'm one of the people behind the scenes helping make this app for you guys. Um, my partner and I just finished our van build, our first van build, a um, few months back. Um, and we knew that we were going to want to spend some time in the winter going snowboarding, all that stuff. Um, luckily, we had uh, a little bit of money to play with. So... Uh, we decided to invest uh, in a system that's built by a company called Van Life Tech. Um, it is their radiant heating floor system. Um, it's actually a two-stage heating system. So it has radiant heating floor and just like a regular forced air heater. Um, it's built off of an S-bar heater. Um, I don't know if it's the similar, if it's the same system that... Um, uh, that most people get that just has the little forced air um, hole that you kind of install, like Mike said earlier, under the driver's seat. Um, this one actually heats up fluid, um, which in turn runs the radiant floor tubes throughout our van. Um, but I just wanted to put it out because um, it's a new system for us. Um, it is definitely on the expensive side, but um, I can share some results that I've had um, we've been camping in weather down in the teens um, and uh, as high as I think 11,000 feet um, elevation. And so far, um, whatever number we set on the thermostat is the number it stays in our van. Um, so we can set the temperature um, and then it will try and heat itself up using the floors. Um, if the floors aren't enough for whatever reason, if it's 20 degrees outside and we have a fan open because we're cooking, um, the forced air will kick in. Um, but it is like a nice internal all-in-one system. So right now it is 33 degrees outside. It's 69 in here um, and our floor temperature is 92 degrees. So um, which is really nice for me. I have very cold feet, uh, literally. Um, we could talk about figuratively, um, but I, whenever my feet are cold, I can just put them on my floor and it's, it's nice and toasty. Um, so like I said, it is one of the more higher end options. Um, I'll put a link in the chat. 
Um, but I do highly recommend it for anybody who has a little bit to work with in their budget um, and really wants a complete all-in-one system for um, just going into really cold places and not even thinking about it. Um, I guess I'll also mention that the system comes with um, unlimited hot water as well. And by unlimited, it just means that it can boil water three gallons per minute, which I think is faster than anyone would need. Um, so I'll put the link in the chat if anyone's interested. Um, but I, I do recommend it if, um, if, you, uh, if you are gonna be spending a lot of time in really cold places. Um, if you don't have the budget, there are absolutely options that will suit you. Um, but I'm, as far as our needs have been concerned, um, it's been completely addressed. So um, I just thought I'd share because it is a relatively new system to the market. Um, and uh, I do recommend it, uh, the Van Life Tech um, heating system. Awesome. Thank you, John. And I think we all might be a little jealous of that heat that you got, especially the differential between the outside. Um, so now I want to bring up some, some lower price alternatives that we're going to be calling our heating hacks. Um, and this includes this hot water bottle that you can just boil some kettle, boil a kettle on your stove, pour it into this little bottle, and then it has like a little um, cloth pouch, and then just throw it in your bed to preheat your bed at night. And then, uh, so that's one way to stay warm. Has anybody here used that show of hands if you have? I know the ladies have. It, it works surprisingly cool well. Everybody. I've done that while I was camping in a sleeping bag. Um, that's a that's a good trick. I like that one. You can also get like a fuzzy one on Amazon, so you can like cuddle with it. <laughs> I think we have it on our Amazon store. <laughs> but yeah, it, it's it's a good low low price trick. I've even filled up a water bottle, which is probably not it wasn't the best thing to do, but I was desperate. So I filled up like a water bottle of hot water and it did the trick. <laughs> and then another thing that you could do if you're desperate, which isn't recommended for long periods of time, is turn your stove on. Um, <laughs> I think I saw in Brie and Lacey's story the other day that that's what they were doing to stay warm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. Um, and then last but not least, a heated blanket. Um, so they sell 12 volt electric heated blankets. You can pick them up on Amazon or Walmart um, in the travel section and just either plug it into like your car if that's where your 12 volt outlet is or um, if you put one in your van or have a portable power pack, um, you can run them right uh, from the 12 volt system without having to invert it. So that would be another alternative. Um, and as actually something that I used to do for the, the for the dog bed too. Just leave a little 12 volt in there so that the dog could stay warm as well. I have been in negative four degree weather with only a, a warming blanket and my water was frozen, but I was, I was fine. It's just, if you have to get up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom, it's a little chilly. Not the same as the, as radiant heated floors. <laughs> No, not at all. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to do a little time check because we're at, uh, well, I'm in Central, so it's 540. Um, so we have about 20 minutes left. Um, and I think the next thing we're going to talk about is insulation. But before we kind of do this, I do just want to get a check on um, how many people have already built their van because I don't know if I should tailor the insulation conversation to be about what to put into your van or how to improve what your van already has. So if your van is already built and you're just looking for add-on solutions, just go ahead and raise your hand. Okay. Okay. Oh, uh, <laughs> and then you guys are actually raising your hand. I love this. And then, um, okay, so it seems like we might have a majority of people already building their van. Is that what I'm, is that what y'all kind of got to? Uh, it looks yes, like Lenny? It. Oh, yeah. 
Uh, yeah, I, I, the way I built my van because I was on a very like low um, income budget, what I did was I got car carpet installation and I put it on top of my roofs and then I, I, I put the, the boards and then I put it on the sides and stuff, the, um, the carpet installation, you know, the, the car, I mean, you know, the, um, what the sponge, you know what I'm talking about that you put underneath the carpet. I yeah. use oh, that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, the carpet padding, I used that and it seemed to work out fine for uh, sound insulation and it kept my van much warmer. So if you're on a budget, that's something you might want to try. It's a little bit better than um, fiberglass. And since I didn't have money for the good stuff, um, I was given a whole bunch of that for free. So brand new missing these pieces and I just shoved it all in there and it works. So awesome. good luck yeah. you guys. Yeah, thank you, Lenny. Um, always coming through with some good tips. Um, so let's see. I think for the sake of time, Jess, it might be good to go over if anybody has tips for um, like, like either windshield covering external or internal for, for like winter insulation, uh, let us know. Does anybody have any tips for windshield coverings? I don't have a tip for windshield coverings, but I have a tip for how to get ice off your windshield. Oh yes, yeah, let's hear need it. So a lot of people use scrapers and stuff, right? When they're in snow or cold. Um, if you get a water bottle and fill it half with um, isopropyl alcohol and half with water, and you spray it all over your window, it will dissolve all the ice because alcohol has a way, way lower freezing temp than water does. And so it will um, kill the ice and then you can use your winter wipers, get it off. So no. Genius. Genius. <laughs> oh man. Could have used that last year. Yeah, science to win. <laughs> love that. Um, I love that you even knew about the temperature. That's great. Um, okay, so we that's what about scrapers though? Do people have like big scrapers for their vans or like do people push snow off of their solar panels or how do how do how does everybody manage this? I'm seeing some shaking. One time I got so desperate I used just a pot. I just grabbed a kitchen pot and I just started scraping the window. Oh, <laughs> Brian's like, get outside. I was like, what? Me? Okay. <laughs> um, I'm seeing some things here about um, Reflectix with quilts from Barry. Um, which is an awesome idea. So if you don't want to buy window covers for um, insulation, Reflectix and cloth are a great alternative. Um, and definitely will keep you hot or hotter inside uh, or cooler inside, depending on the season. It works both ways. And also, if folks want a medium budget window cover, I think there's a new company, Van Essential. Um, so a lot of the window covers are like a thousand dollars plus for the set. These are like six or seven hundred dollars for the set. Um, and they use the same insulation that's in the bigger ones, but they use like the off brand Chinese version of it or something. So they're kind of taking the window cover and commoditizing it a little more. And it's pursuing specifically for sprinters. I should, I should qualify that. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Karina. The first window covers were Reflectix. We just got a big thing of Reflectix and we cut it the shape of the window and then we spray painted it black. And then the black we put outside so people couldn't look in and it wasn't like bright silver, but that, that worked all right. <laughs> I have um, two things. Is the sound okay? Sound check? Yeah, yeah good. Um, this isn't like super, super helping, but it does help. I've got these from Target that, um, or you guys have seen these things, like right, it's black on one side and then silver on the other for the windshield. But depending on the weather, I'm putting the black side out to absorb more sun so that I can bring more of that in or I flip it to push the sun out. Um, 
And then the question that I had was those throwaway camping blankets that are metallic, you know, they're like super cheap. If I want to line based on the radiant flooring inspiration, um, it does get cold. I'm in a minivan. If I want to line in the floor, just the existing floor with that, is there a right way to do that and a wrong way? Is there an up and a down of those? Does anybody know? Hey, I'll, I'll chime in on the Mylar blanket idea. Um, okay. it, it could, I mean, it, you're, you're headed in the right direction with the idea, but, but really for insulation, what works best is air. So um, that's why the Reflectix is essentially bubble wrap. And that air barrier is almost as critical as the foil facing on it or the Mylar facing. So uh, a Mylar blanket on your metal skin of the van isn't really going to, to help, um, unfortunately. It might actually just trap moisture in a bad way. So um, you'd be better off with something lofty like, uh, like wool blankets or, or, or something with, um, you know, that will trap air. Um, you know, even in some, in some regards, uh, like corrugated cardboard would, would be better than a Mylar blanket in that sense. And we're talking inside though. You said on the metal skin, I'm talking right interior. Yeah. Yeah. Even on the interior, um, like, you know, I'm assuming, you know, so even if you have felt on the inside of your, of your van, um, that Mylar blanket isn't really going to help the way you're hoping it will. Got you. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. Yep. Yeah, our, our values are a thing beyond my pay grade. Um, Thank you. I have, I have window coverings from Quest Overland, which I think Jess, you do too, right? Yeah. Yeah. Those are great. I love them. Yeah, I'm like, maybe, I don't know if I can show you all them. They're like, we keep them, where is this? We keep them right here. They're magnetic. Yeah. We just store them up there. If you wanted, you could store them in place. So they just accordion fold up. Yeah, but those are great. Super blackout, good insulation. And there's a promo code with that Barb has a discount for it. That's awesome. And it's supporting someone in the in our community. It's yeah. the, you know, Take the guy the hand, one. right? Yeah. What was that? She makes them all by hand. Like she sews them with like this industrial like sewing machine. And uh, she even like started offering screens for the slider door. So yeah, plug cool. screens. Yeah. Bree, you might need one of those after your Florida experience. Okay. Um, I think we're, we're probably covered on this one. So I'm gonna jump ahead in light of time unless John, were you about to say something? Okay, I saw your green thing around your Zoom. Um, okay, condensation. Okay, this is one of the biggest problems with winter van life. Um, there is a lot of moisture that comes out of your body when you sleep. Every breath you take is um, expelling moisture into your environment. So as much as it can be tempting to like close all the windows and stay warm, um, what you're really doing is trapping all of that moisture in your vehicle. So it's super critical that you have a, a vent um, somewhere in your van, either your front windows, if you don't have any louvered windows or a rooftop vent. Yeah, I see Rob is pointing to his too. Um, this is one thing that's really gonna save you. And we always have this criteria that like, when you have the front windshield cover up and you pull it down in the morning and it's frosted on the inside and you have to scrape the inside, then we didn't vent well enough. Um, so I did want to bring that up to see if anybody else had um, experience or tips and tricks that they wanted to share with regard to um, condensation, um, any desiccants that might work um, or dehumidifiers. Uh, Michael, go ahead and unmute yourself. Thanks. Um, when I first started out in the van, I bought um, like a plug-in dehumidifier. What, what did you call it? Like the passive dehumidifier? Decant? Something like that? Like a, a desiccant? Desiccant, yeah. It's like the little pearls that absorb moisture out of the, the air. What I ended up reading online, and the reason why this didn't work for me is because the moisture, it, it does work in small spaces to, to suck some of the moisture out of the air, but since it's passive, it only holds so much. And as soon as you open the van door, it can kind of equalize with whatever you have going on outside. Um, 
the, I stop, I still have that in the van, but I, I stopped using it once I got the heater. So I would think that any heat, whether like a diesel heater or a propane heater, as long as it's vented outside, those are providing like the dry heat inside. So even on really cold nights now, even if I have the windows closed, I don't wake up with any moisture inside anymore. Um, and that would happen all the time beforehand. I would get like the ice on the inside of my windshield and I just knew it was getting into the walls. It was driving me nuts. But um, yeah, any, any vented heat source that's venting outside would probably help with that, drying up the air a little bit. Yeah, that's, a, that's actually a really good point. Um, and I do just want to say like, we, we know some people that were camping like in Alaska or the Pacific Northwest where it's, it's really moist in those areas anyway. And then with the addition of winter, um, you know, that breath in your van, it can lead to mold, like serious levels of mold in your, in your rig. So this is actually like a pretty like important thing to do correctly because it might be in places that you don't see. Um, and that's where that kind of like, when you think through what insulation you're putting behind your walls and how the vapor barrier works, that all of those thoughts that, and like process that you need to go through, um, are actually really important to making sure that you stay healthy in your rig as well. Okay. So, okay. How to dry your winter gear. Any tips on this one? Cause one of the big things that people in our community like to do is go skiing, right? Um, or like snowboarding and like be on the mountain. And that's probably why some of you are here now. So let's say you just got off the slopes, you have all of your gear, your boots, your skis, everything. And now it's all in your van <laughs> and at the end of the day um, with you and it's dripping with snow. So has anybody had that? And if, do you want to share your story? Oh man. We actually have a broom closet. Well, we call it a broom closet, um, but we, it, during the winter, we keep our, our gear in it and we have, like, we just put a rag on the floor and they go straight into that broom closet. Uh, that's, that's what we do. We just have a special place for them and they stand up. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing there's some microfiber cloths. I don't know, Barb, if that was about this, but yeah. Yeah, making, so I, we've done two winters in the van um, chasing snow um, with the mountain collective pass. And, you know, it's like 16 different mountains and you spend two days at every mountain. Um, but then every night, you know, we had to make sure that our, we try to get back to the van before the sunset so the gear can stay outside of the van till it dries and then bring that in. Um, wiping everything off with those types of cloths, making sure the heater is running to keep yourself dry. Um, and then a good like shelf or like hook system for all of your gear to hang up. Um, Cause most of this stuff, it will dry out if you kind of keep that space dry. Um, I'm, I'm trying to wonder if I should show y'all what I have, but essentially I think hooks are really your best friend. So if you have like 3M command hooks or any sort of hook um, where you can hang everything to dry will be probably the best bet. I was doing that today. I was leveraging the sun, not for skiing, but something else. And I, I had to get over the self-consciousness, right? And I just hooked all my stuff, my clothes. You're breaking up a bit there, S. So, um, my thing was I had some moisture, but I had odor on clothes that somebody had taken my clothes for um, alterations and I'm very chemically sensitive. So I just couldn't have it in here. Mm, yeah. Odor. Uh, well, I was thinking odor in a different way for the van, but um, yeah. <laughs> and I hope you all know about like Febreze and um, downy wrinkle releaser too for that type of thing if if you want to wear your ski clothes multiple days but that is a different conversation um, awesome we're doing awesome here we have about five more minutes and so Ray let's... had a good question Jess it's oh. uh, like one thing he read an article that advised not to insulate for cold weather if most of your travel is during warm or hot what is in warm or hot weather because it takes so long for the interior to cool down after hot days, what do you think? Um, 
I actually, because we did a, con we had a conversion company called SD Camper Vans where we built about three dozen a year. And um, a lot of people would ask us for like, you know, they go to the winter one year, like they want their van insulated for that. And insulation is very expensive. Good insulation is very expensive. So I, for the expensive reason, I would say do not plan for winter if you are only gonna do it every great once in a while. Um, like don't insulate your van for winter because of that. Not necessarily because it will take longer to cool um, because insulation works kind of both ways. If it's really hot outside, insulation will actually help your van stay cool on the inside. Um, but mostly because of cost, the cost of, of, of like winter insulation. I do want to just pause on that point though real quick. Insulation is for cold and for heat. Um, it, it helps both in the summer and in the winter. So I, I wouldn't agree necessarily with the idea that it would take longer to cool to, to cool down. Just think about covering your window. It's yeah. Yep. Yeah. Totally. Okay. These are great. Um, all right, we have a few more minutes. Let's um, let's talk about the best places to go. Where are you guys heading? What what is what's on your agenda? Are you going someplace cool? Are you going? Let's talk about uh, cold places first. And we can just have an open discussion here. And 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 specifically like for van life because some places are very van life friendly. Other places are are not at all. So any tips on where to go, like what mountains to go to? I know for us, Big Bear in California, Big Bear is great. There is ample parking uh, in the winter, especially for van life. Mm -hmm. um, not in the national forest. It is a little bit of boondocking in the not in the neighborhoods, but they have like parking areas um, that that a lot of people stay in. Uh, download the Van Life app if you want to see. Yeah, and is. and I will just say that um, ski like places where it snows can be tricky because all of the national forests that you're used to being able to access in the summertime are not plowed. The roads aren't maintained. So if storm has just come through or the area has a lot of um, collected snow, you probably won't be able to access those places that you're used to. And a lot of ski towns or ski resorts now are cracking down on people sleeping in their vehicles in the parking lot. And they actually close the parking lots overnight. Um, so there, there still are some places that are friendly to us though. Like Taos will let you stay there for two weeks in their, in their parking lot for free, no questions asked. So if you're going to New Mexico, Taos would definitely be a very friendly place for um, van lifers. Mammoth, um, I'm sure a, a lot of y'all are calling in from California. Um, Mammoth has great, um, I guess just BLM type camping around, but definitely make sure you have rescue equipment or tracks or all-terrain tires at minimum before you go out there. Um, a lot of them also oh, require right. chains. So carry, carry chains um, would also be a, a pro tip there. Tell your ride is a good one. They have and, free, a free parking lot. Yeah. Yeah, this is the type of information we need to share with each other. <laughs> All right, now let's uh, let's switch over then to warm places. Where are people planning to hit up? Should we either unmute and tell us or put put it in the chat. Joshua Tree. It's an awesome one. Yeah, I feel like Joshua Tree is the um, the winter place for van life. <laughs> yeah. And Quartzsite is usually a really big destination as well in Arizona. It's right on the border of California and Arizona, um, just east of Havasu. Um, and that's where they typically hold the Rubber Tramp Rendezvous um, every year, but I don't think that it will be happening this year. I think he's gonna be doing it virtually, but um, 
great big giant BLM land, you know, just desert for miles that you can hang out in. I've been reading that there's still a lot of RTR related stuff that's going to be happening in Quartzsite, like party RTR is happening. Um, yeah, party RTR. Party <laughs> R. <laughs> I didn't name it. Um, anyways, just letting you know. Mm. Oh, Sedona. A couple of people in Sedona. That's a beautiful spot. Yeah, I would also recommend. Oh, go ahead, Heather. We were just in Sedona camping in our van uh, right before Thanksgiving, and it was jam packed. And there were a lot of people camping, and BLM Forest Service roads, you know, pretty far out of town, were pretty packed. So there's definitely a lot of camping. There's also a lot of people. <laughs> Yeah, during a pandemic. Right, right. Um, so let's all be, I guess, mindful of that. Um, I see, okay, I see a few things here. In, uh, New England, we have John is up in New England, actually. Up there. And then um, Key West, we just got back from Key West. Uh, the ladies and I spent Thanksgiving there. Um, uh, there's a big, camp, like, RV park in Key West called Boyd's. Um, it's too expensive probably, but um, it was nice to have a, a place where we belonged for a couple of days without having to stealth camp. Um, the Keys are a little difficult just because they're islands and there's not that many places to go, um, but it is possible. I know the ladies found a few spots to stealth camp. Okay. Baja in a non-COVID era. Baja's awesome in the winter. Uh, for those of you, we have a couple blogs on our website about Baja traveling. It's one of my favorite places to go. Uh, not sure if you can drive there right now, but. Um, Would you it, guys go if you were like solo female traveler? Uh, Lacey did that last year. I did. I met Bryce down there. <laughs> awesome. I did. I um so. I remember driving through and I've been in Mexico a lot as a kid. So I was, and I've been warned by my family, you know, be safe and things. And I really felt, I kind of felt like at home. I felt okay, like really okay. Uh, it's to each his own. Um, and I got to the, the place that I was supposed to go and there was no cell service. And um, I still felt okay. Like, of course there's that fear, you have to get over it get through it and once I worked through it then I was like I had a, a really good time meditated relaxed journaled it was it was very nice I would say definitely plan ahead uh more so because the you're you're more likely than you are in the U.S. to like run out of service and if you're on a beach and you get stuck in the sand there may not be people around for a while so like plan ahead know where you're going there are a ton of people camping down in Baja so you will not, you'll hardly ever spend a day without seeing another van lifer. Um, it's very popular down there. Thanks. Yeah, that's a good point. And just a quick reminder, the Van Life app does help you find people nearby. So the more people that are on the app, the easier it will be to find other people on the app. Um, so that'd be one good resource too, because then you can message other other people, other members of the community, um, if anything does come up. Um, and I think my internet is probably unstable right now, but um, we're at our close. So I just want to thank everybody for coming. There, there was so much good information shared today that um, I, I want to make sure that if each of you need to connect with each other, that you have a moment to do that. So we'll kind of leave this open. So if you need to DM anyone here or figure out what their handle is, um, either um, on the Van Life app so that you can message them on the Van Life app. Um, uh, Cause what we really want to do is just make sure we're facilitating community connection um, so that we can all thrive on the road. And for any of you in San Diego, Turn on the Van Life app. We'll we'll connect with you on on the app. Just reach out to us, connect with us, message us. I know um, Barb's coming down in a couple of days. Maybe we should do. We have a projector. Maybe we should do like a, a outdoor movie, social distance movie night. 
Super I was I was supposed to come down to San Diego next week, but I think I might be coming in January now. Because my apartment that I was going to rent in Washington fell through. So I don't know what I'm doing. I'm going to live in my van. <laughs> Heck yeah. I love it. All right. Well, and before everybody goes, a uh, small request. Um, please let us know um, how likely you would be to recommend these events. Um, we are always open to new topic ideas. So if there's a topic you want to see, um, let us know. Next month in January, we are going to be having Lacey do our, her um, goal setting, intention setting, and dreamlining so that um, you can plan your, your 2021 um, with one of the best planners I know and goal setters. So that's what we have coming in January for the next meetup. And then in February, uh, we've had a lot of requests for um, like how to have relationships, whether they are friendships or romantic on the road. So we're going to be doing a bit of a special with um, dating and relationships on the road. So if you have a story you want to share, just just send us a message and we can feature your story. Um, otherwise, um, come and learn about what all the cool kids are doing um, dating these days. So thank you all for being here. Make sure we're connected um, either on the app or on Instagram or email. It's lovely to have you all here and I hope you have a wonderful holiday season.